Only on CBN. Well, there's the cutest little filly in town. <laughs> Sweetie, this is just like going from a Mack truck to a Jaguar. Uh, that's a gift. Kelly, dear, I'm sorry we woke you. I, I didn't mean to. Why didn't you wake me sooner? Did I miss anything? Kelly, sweetie. Mmm, haven't seen you in ages. Say, that reminds me. We got some business to tend to. You remember that horse you picked for me? One by five lengths, and I had 50 across on it. Here, <laughs> buy yourself a mink jacket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how'd you happen to pick Fargo Bill? Well, you said he never won a race, and I felt sorry for him. <laughs> Bentley, baby. How would it be if Kelly left school and went to the track with me every day? Sure, just give this kid a racing form, tell her a sad story, and wherever the teardrop falls, that's the horse you play. <laughs> Darling, it's uh, getting kind of light. Don't you think you should go back to bed? Sweetie, couldn't I stay up for a little while? Oh, come on, Bentley. Let the kid stay up. She can sleep in school tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Winnie, I saw a movie of yours on television last night. You're kidding. You mean they're showing silent pictures on TV? Rendezvous <laughs> in Burma. You were so beautiful in that scene where you said goodbye to the Air Force Major. Go, go, my darling. Your squadron needs you. A woman is born to suffer and wait and hope. Go, Donald, yeah, go! You go. You go right back to bed okay. now. Come on. Beautiful. And then that other scene when you were talking to Harold. Harold, it's Bart I love. There can never be anything between us. And then Harold says, Well, I reckon I kind of figured it was that way. But there'll never be another woman for me. Oh, just a horse. Now, come on, let's get on the horse. Oh, when I come in and say goodnight. Her room is a mess. She talks like, like I don't know what. Uncle Bentley, baby, Peter, sweetie, Jasper, doll. She never sleeps. She's being raised just like Topsy. She just grows. I'm sorry, what would you want? Mr. Corey is here. Oh, send him in, send him in. Hi. Won't you come in, Mr. Corey? Sure. Oh, Phil, come on in. How are you? And who is your charming companion? Bentley, I'd like you to meet my daughter, Julia. Dear, this is Mr. Gregg. So nice, Mr. Gregg. Father has spoken of you so often. Oh, well, as a client, I hope he spoke well. <laughs> Julie's just in for the weekend from school. Daddy tells me you have a niece my age. I hope to meet her sometime. Well, I hope so too, dear. I, I'd like you two to meet. Daddy, you probably want to talk to Mr. Gregg in private. Why don't I wait in the outer office? All right, dear, I won't be long. It's been a great pleasure meeting you, Mr. Gregg. The pleasure has been all mine, Julie. Bye. Bye. Phil, how does a mug like you get such a delightful daughter? <laughs> Julie is the product of six months' polish at Miss Marquand's finishing school. Oh? What was she like before you, uh, you sent her up the river? Primitive. I'm trying to blot the memory from my mind. Her table manners. Her personal habits and her room. Well, we're just cutting the weeds in Kelly's closet today. <laughs> Board of Health trying to condemn it as a slum area. Well, if you're having any problems, why don't you consider Miss Marquand? Well, we have some small problems, Phil, but I've never thought of such a, such a drastic solution. I'm afraid I'd miss Kelly. Well, we miss Julie, too, but believe me, it's worth it. That school really makes young ladies out of those girls. I don't know whether Kelly would like it. Not unless... Not unless the library subscribed to the daily racing form. Why don't I drop a brochure by your house? Oh, I don't think so, Farrell. They have wonderful activities here. There's, there's social dancing, there's horseback riding, skiing, fencing. Oh, no, I, I don't think so. I'd miss her too much. <laughs> Ow! Ginger called Nancy, Nancy called Helen, Helen called Karen, and Karen called me. Now, you're supposed to call Susan and Pamela, and when Pamela calls Leah, Leah is supposed to call me. And whoever breaks the chain is cursed by the voodoo god of the Incas. And if we all connect, we'll have a blast and go to the movie. Would it help you any if I got you a long stick with a nail on the end of it? But if Leah doesn't call me, well, I'll go bicycling instead. All right, sweetie. I'll talk to you later. Bye, doll. Now, Kelly, dear, would you mind... Oh, I forgot. I lost my bicycle. Where? In your room? <laughs> What's the matter, Uncle Bentley, baby? <laughs> Uncle Bentley, baby, would like you to get through one meal without these phone calls. Now, darling, dinner is a shambles every night. Will, will you please come back and sit at the table? Now, honey, I don't mean this to be entirely a criticism of you. I'm equally at fault. But you're being raised like this was a gypsy camp. 
Tonight my night off. Uh, when you gypsies want dessert. Peter, I'm trying to make a serious point. Now, as of tonight, there will be no more phone calls while we're eating. No more phone calls while we're eating. <laughs> Honey, just today a client came into the office with his daughter. About, about your age. And I don't like to make comparisons, but she was... Good-mannered? Yes, good-mannered. But that wasn't all. She was also... Tidy? <laughs> yes, tidy. Peter, didn't you say something about this being your night off? I suppose she's one of those icky types that always says and does the right thing. She wasn't so icky. Kelly, darling. Look, I don't expect you to bring home medals for neatness, but... I am not doing my duty as a parent unless I give you the opportunity to, to grow up properly. Like the little icky girl that came into your office? Now, Kelly, there's nothing icky about doing and saying the right things. Now, do you know that that little girl, Julie, six months ago, belonged to your, uh, your tribe? And her parents were so concerned, they sent her away to school. Is that what you want for me? Why, no, dear, certainly not. I want you here with me. But I also want you to eat your dinner, and I want you to clean up your room every now and then. <laughs> All right, dear. All right. We'll, we'll fight the Board of Health together. <laughs> And no more phone call while we're eating. <laughs> Long distance? You must want head gypsy. <laughs> Hello? Why, Sheila! Como esta usted? How's Mexico City? <laughs> Need you ask? I'll go fix my room. What? Back tomorrow night? Oh, what a shame. I can't. I'm on the hot lunch committee at Kelly's school. They're having a big meeting tomorrow night. Well, all right. Peter, I cleaned my room. What are you trying to do? Ruin your reputation? <laughs> Peter, what was Uncle Bentley's life like before I came here? Pretty good every night. In awful rut. <laughs> But he was having fun. You silly little girl. Now uncle's life full of meaning. Hot lunch committee, chairman cookie drive, full life. <laughs> but I am a responsibility. Responsibility good for a man. If you don't come, he throw his whole life away enjoying himself. <laughs> Why you ask question? You have reason? I just wanted to be sure about something. I'll get it. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm Phil Corey. I'm an old friend of your uncle's. You must be Kelly. Is your uncle in? No, he's not here right now, but he should be home soon. Wouldn't you like to wait? Oh, no, thank you, Kelly. I just wanted to drop off this brochure. Your uncle's a little bit hesitant, but believe me, you're going to love that school. Julie says she'd be glad to show you the ropes. Oh, of course, she was a little bit homesick at first, but now she doesn't even want to come home weekends. They have all kinds of activities there. There's social dancing, horseback riding, skiing, field hockey, ballet. Very personal client of yours would like to see you, Mr. Gregg. Why, Miss Gregg, what a pleasure. <laughs> It's a pleasure for me, too. Say, we haven't had one of our sessions for a long time, Kelly. How about lunch next Saturday? I don't think I'll be able to. I may be away at school. Darling, what, what's all this school business? Well, I've been thinking about what we were talking about. And then Mr. Corey left this at the house. Oh. It sounds great, Uncle Bentley. See, they have skiing and... Horseback riding? Don, you, you know, I didn't ask Mr. Corey to bring this. Oh, I know you didn't, Uncle Bentley. It sounds like a swell school. Sure, it's a good school. Can't tell much from a pamphlet. Oh, I think it would be loads of fun. I'd meet a lot of new friends. And I've always wanted to learn how to ski. Don, you really want to go? <laughs> Why shouldn't I want to go? 
Unless you have some objection. Do you? I only want you to go if, if you want to go. Do you? Yes, I want to go. I told you. I love horseback riding and, and skiing and, and all the other things. Look, they have swimming and, and social dancing and tennis and badminton. 